Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I'll send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com here for another SLS launch attempt of the uh, the Artemis rocket here at NASA Kennedy Space Center. We're in front of the clock. This is the countdown clock. Right now it's three hours and 23 minutes to hold, but we are roughly six hours until launch. We've got, no, less than six hours, like four hours. Let's see, nine o'clock, 10, 11, 12, one. We're four hours from launch and uh, hopefully everything goes off this time because we've done this twice so far and twice I've gone home without anything of, uh, well, everybody's gone home because it hasn't launched yet. But let me show you what I brought here. So over here, I've got two things set up. I've got two tripods set up because I'm gonna work with, we've got a 402.8 with a R3. I've got another tripod set up here that I may put a 600 F4 onto, not sure yet, and I'm vlogging with the R3 and the 15 to 35. I'm gonna have a 360 camera ready to go and everything, and I already screwed something up. So let me, let me, tell, you, let me tell you what I screwed up. I, uh, I went to use my 70 to 200 28 and put it onto the tripod, onto the Ben Row head, and I couldn't do it. Why? Because I didn't bring the tripod collar. There is absolutely no reason for you to be using this lens collar on this lens. I left a tripod collar at home, which means I'm probably gonna go ahead and handhold the wide angle shot, and I'm gonna be the one banging those shots out, which uh, handholding, and then grab the 600 F4 with a R3 and try to get the shots with that. So I'm gonna run three different cameras plus the 360 camera, and we'll see how it all works out. Difficult thing here is it's dark, but when that thing lights up, it's gonna be super bright, so I'm not really sure what the exposure is gonna be. Anything that I set up now, it's gonna end up being underexposed to compensate for the brightness. Also, we'll be shooting raw as always, and hopefully we end up with some good stuff. The whole, the whole idea here is to take you guys to a launch, and if I mess up something, I'll tell you about it, which I already did, and hopefully I don't mess up anything else, but end up with some good stuff. But we'll see what happens, so stay tuned. You are looking at the rocket and Orion spacecraft live on launch pad 39B. Artemis 1 embodies the hard work of thousands across the world determined to explore for the benefit of all. I have to hit record. It might help. I have to hit record. It might help. Hi. Hi, right, we're recording. Go ahead. All right, my name is Trevor. I am a photographer for Ars Technica here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida for the Artemis One mission. My name is Cooper Heim. Uh, I run a small cinema company called Singularity. Uh, I also work with Everyday Astronaut. And not hitting record again. Bruh. It's one job. I'm looking at the Apparently, number. Apparently, Fro does not know photo. No, this is video. That's why. This isn't my job. It's, it's usually not video. What'd you say? Fro does not know photo. I'm deleting you from no, the vlog. Wait, I, I did hit record already. Sweet. Cool. Alright, you're good. Recording. Uh, my name is Brandon Wynn. I'm a freelance still photographer and uh, photojournalist for spaceflightnews.com. Uh, my name is Max Evans. I am a launch photographer down here on the space coast of Florida. I shoot for universetoday.com. Hey, I'm uh, Seth Kurkowski. Uh, my Instagram is Seth, Seth Kirk. Space Explorer. Me and this record. guy. Um, yep, me and this guy. Part of 9 to 5. And uh, some of the stuff I'm looking for is I'm doing horizontal. Most of my photos are for articles. So I need uh, the horizontal for to fit better within the, uh, the frame of those of those, uh, those things. So I'm looking for a little bit of reflection off the water um, and then um, something close up just to get a nice nice good view of the, of the rocket. I've got about 14 Canon mirrorless cameras dotted around the Space Center and kind of talk through some quick tips of how to photograph a rocket launch. Go for it. So uh, starting out with the remote cameras, I've got basically the full range from 24 millimeters all the way to 800 millimeters, um, capturing anything from the wide, the plume, the sort of exhaust and the steam that you see to tight in, uh, real low exposure, uh, basically, you know, shooting sort of all of the detail that you can get out of the really bright plumes, almost as bright as the sun. Really? It's as bright as the sun? Yeah. But right now we've got a tracker, which is a Ross video head that is, uh, it's got repeatability up to 0 0.01 degrees, and we're at, I think, 800 millimeters uh, with a 2x, 2x crop. Uh, we're doing 120 frames a second at 4K, and then we have uh, 8K at 120, raw on the Earth to 12K wow. uh, down below it. So we're going to be doing some really, really high quality, really high fidelity, high frame rate stuff. So 
I'm pretty excited about that. I have currently six cameras out in the pad, a variety of wide and tight. Um, what cameras? So I'm running a 5D Mark III, 5D Mark II, two 5D Mark IIs, two 80Ds, and then an R, not, not, not an R, uh, 60. Excuse so me. Are you, are, let me ask you, the uh, older cameras, do they get closer to the pad just in case anything goes wrong with them? It doesn't really matter so much for pad B, like if you're on a uh, Slick 41, that's definitely the case, but we're not close enough this time for it to really matter. Um, out here looking to capture some heavy detail shots of the Artemis 1 mission, um, shooting on Canon mirrorless EOS R series. Well, Sounds like a lot of Canon shooters. Canon? Yeah. Are you guys all Canon the shooters? Oddball. What do you got? I'm the Sony guy. Pentax? So, yes, Pentax. <laughs> I'm, yes. Hey, don't hate. I will, I will be shooting a long oh, exposure wow. with this. Oh, I love that camera. It's a like a wannabe. <laughs> I got Fujifilm over there, 102 nice. megapixels. Nice. Yeah, he's really? done medium oh, format. Yeah. Nice. Space Ghost Steve. Space Ghost Steve. Oh my god, is that Stephen Moore? <laughs> I don't know who the that is. Horn? <laughs> We're trying to catch the red team. I think that might be the red team right there. You see him? Oh, yeah, I had now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks for getting that. Yeah, Megan, uh, continuing to track the Red Crew's work at the launch pad. This is a specially trained team of three individuals, two technicians, one safety representative who are currently right now inside the mobile launcher at the base of the launch pad. The red team is out there because the blue team wasn't ready to go and shirts and skins are going. Actually, they're, they're sending out a team called the red team to... Torque some nuts? Torque some yep. um, nuts or bolts? Nuts. Bolts. No, 100% nuts. What are they? What are they doing? They're, they're torquing they're, fasteners. No, really. What are they doing? They're, they're, that's what they're doing. They're torquing nuts. They're torquing nuts. Yeah. So why are you guys gonna get me in trouble by NASA? They're gonna be like, "Did you say torquing nuts on your vlog? I, I, Is that the official term?" Are we torquing the, these that's what NASA <laughs> told us. <laughs> they're torquing yeah. these nuts. Uh, they're going to <laughs> torque yeah, packing nuts. nuts. They're doing work on a replenish valve. Currently torquing down the bolts in order to remedy a leak in that replenish valve that was detected a little over an hour ago. Let me jump in here real quick and let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're looking to build your very own online portfolio, use what I use and I've been using for jaredpoem.com for well over 10 years at this point. 10 years! Because it's simple, easy, and affordable and you don't need to know any coding. In fact, it takes me about a matter of five minutes to put up new galleries. I just drag the pictures in I want, Squarespace does the rest, it goes live, and I don't have to worry about anything. It's simple, easy, affordable. To get your 14-day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. If you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Now, let's get back to the video. So where are you locking your exposure in to start? I'm going probably a little bit lower than I do. I, I haven't really gone through my settings just yet. I kind of go that right towards the end, um, you know, while, we, while I'm setting things up. So I, I actually don't know exactly what I'm Ballpark? doing. Ballpark? Just ballpark it, really, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Oh, what is the ballpark? Oh, I don't know. I'll probably do, I, I do aperture uh, priorities. So I'll probably do ISO in the hundreds, probably. Um, and then uh, uh, I'll go down to, I'll probably do F8 uh, or so, mm. um, give it a little bit more sharpness. So what basic settings are you going to be shooting with out here? So for the distant shots, um, somewhere in the ballpark of like one two thousandth of a second, F9, ISO 100. And really? then for the close-up shots, uh, probably a little bit darker than that. He, like close up from here? Uh, yeah. Like, like with, what lens? With a Canon RF 800. Uh, F11? Doubled. doubled. F11 with a converter? F11. F22? Not F9. No, not F9. <laughs> really? 2000? Yeah. Hold on, I gotta turn this around and I gotta, I gotta talk to... 2000? One two thousandth of a second? At F9? Yeah. That's gonna work? Yeah. Shows you I don't know shit. It's gonna be really, really bright. So like, you know, the pictures that you'll take right as you are testing out at those settings will be completely pitch black. So you're at 100 ISO or so? Yep. Really? Base, base whatever native base is. Yeah, so it's gonna be bright. It's gonna be really And you're bright. saying that the, 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 the fire's gonna be like 600 feet long, twice as long as the, uh, the rocket? Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, so my ballpark is with the SRBs, I shoot roughly two stops under. And so daytime is like one over 1200 uh, shutter speed, F8, ISO 200 in that ballpark. And so two stops below that is double the shutter speed, half the ISO, and um, 
That's where I start from. Jesus. And as it lifts off shooting mirrorless on the Canon, you get the really nice uh, high refresh rate. And so you could, you know, ramp it down and you have the exposure simulation so you can see it bright yeah. and darken as, you, uh, as the moment is happening. I'm shooting a variety of wide and tight anywhere from about 24 mil to about, I think I have a camera or a lens set at the crawler right looking uh, directly at it at about 840 mil um, exposed. I think it's around 6400 F. 14 or 16 for an engine shot that I've been trying to get for a while. 800 F11 like uh, this guy right here. And yeah, uh, yeah just looking forward to the launch. It's 2500, uh, ISO 100. And then when you get to the remote cameras, when you get close up to the launch pad, this is uh, like 8,000th of a second. Right. F16 ISO 100. Go back to the stuff from a distance because that's all I care about because that's what I'm shooting. Uh -huh. So like <laughs> right here. I'm really using you guys right now to help me. Picking our brains for free, huh? Yeah, that's right. Giving so away all your secrets. Is, that's see. not from here. Um, no, that's from French don't, Guiana. Don't delete the photo. D delete the photo. There we go. I can't see that. Can you read that to me? 1000 FA200. Holy shit. That's right there. Even from back here, it's going to be the same, even if I'm shooting 70 to 200? Yeah. So the work should take about 15 minutes to complete. That's what? Still, that's still looking yeah. good. Yeah. What, 15 minutes? Yeah, the, they're sending out uh, two. 15 or 15? 15. One over? What? Yeah. One, one over. over? One over. One over 15. Sorry, one over 15. Yeah, there was one, one over, over two 15. technicians and one oh, over yeah. two. One over yeah. one safety nets uh, to do. Wow. Uh, one over packing nuts. Nice. Imagine being at that rocket fully fueled. I would be at the base of it. Like you are next to a bomb. You are literally next to a bomb. You're standing next to one right now. I didn't mean I didn't mean you. I meant in front of you. <laughs> no, no, see, actually, this, this, this is the gun show. Actually, apparently, uh, someone asked during the press conference a, a couple show, days ago if yeah. they torqued these nuts after the hurricane, and they said no, that was not torqued needed. These nuts. <laughs> <laughs> There it is. Currently, we have an update on that red crew, which went out to the pad to torque down some bolts on a leaky hydrogen replenish valve for the core stage. And that update is that the red crew has departed the blast danger area. They have completed their work. Are you guys all set up over in the press area? Yeah. 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 He's got 14 cameras set up. Dub. Yeah. I thought you had Dub. six. Mm. 11 out at the pad, three here. 11 at yeah. the pad? Let me check that math. That's 14. <laughs> I thought you went over fourteen. One over fing A, Jared. This guy. <laughs> one over fourteen. These wow. kids and their I got exposures. a fourteenth of a camera out there. Do you say ISO? Is it cake? This guy does. <laughs> what ISO? Cake? I, like cake that? or ISO? Which which one? ASA. ASA, yeah. Anyway, I wasn't prepared for the one twenty five hundredth of a second at F nine or F eight at a hundred ISO, but they say the thing's gonna be brighter than the sun. Can you be brighter than the sun? I guess you can be brighter than the sun. Or as bright as the sun. Yeah, or but something. If this is brighter than the sun, then how the heck do you see the rocket? You don't. That night, you're not gonna see it. We're not gonna see the rocket? No. Won't there be some After, Don't you think? You'll see it as it gets off the pad and then you be might see it for like, like for a second or two as it approaches the cloud layer and the light yeah. reflects off. Well, once okay. it clears the tower it gets pretty dark. Yeah. Yep. Because there's not yeah, a night stuff before. Sorry, just Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. With this cloud, with this cloud layer too, as it gets higher and higher, the white is going to reflect off and bounce off the rocket. So we'll have maybe like like a second for it to be lit up by the clouds with the light reflecting off yep. of it yeah. before it punches through. But once it's like a few hundred feet above the tower, is dark. all that changing? It's going to get it's really gonna be dark, dark again. Just yeah. flames. Yeah. So you're just going for that to the tower and a little bit yeah. above. Yep. That's what really, that's what really all you can do. So you're not really going to track anything then. You can track. Depends on how exposure. much we can see. Uh, Depends on how as, the as it goes up, yeah, the yeah. angle on the engine is going to change a little bit, so you can kind of get some detail there and it's as roll. it rolls. Right now, yeah. it's kind of is it angle like this. It's, it's going to flip in front, like front of you. Okay. Same, yeah, same so like it's pretty high up. So it's it's the same kind of roll maneuver this way. as the, the shuttle. When do the uh, that's going to be really high up? I mean, at that point, it's just a dot in the sky. Looking to get everything back on track to try to make that launch window at 1.04 a.m. Eastern time. So what are your exposure settings again? Just let me know. One <laughs> over 2,500. 1, 2,500th for <laughs> <f> <laughs> sake. <laughs> One yeah. divided by 2,500. 2,500 F8, F8 at ISO 160? 100, anywhere around 100 or 200 is what they're saying. When is, when is booster set? Because you from? can pull back, but once the boosters are gone, they're gone. Yeah. Yep. Wow. And oh. if you're massively underexposed, I guess you're not I mean, that high at ISO, so, so you... And, and you're shooting cameras, raw. Yeah, exactly, and the cameras have so basically... When is, when is booster set? <laughs> pushing uh, the exposure doesn't four matter. Minutes? No, no. No, it's like two something minutes, isn't it? It's, like a, couple, it's a couple minutes. It's a couple minutes. Yeah. I think it's like two and a half. You'll see two when it happens, I think. ISO 200. 
Really? Yeah. It happens Pretty surprising, right? That seems okay. <laughs> crazy cool. different than what I'm seeing. It happens when it happens. It happens when it happens. Cool. And we'll have I mean, the, like it launches when it launches. They shoot happens. all the launches. Yeah, no, I'm going with what they're saying. Yeah. I'm going to be looking. Yeah. How many? Like 115. Boring. How many in that? I'm just <laughs> We are T minus 10 minutes away from liftoff of Artemis 1. This video is brought to you by Keeps. No, it's, by, it's brought to you by Mr. Clean. Get it right. Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean. That's his name. That name I know again what Keeps is. is Mr. Clean. What is it? I thought you were with the hair, hair regrowth uh, guy. <laughs> Keeps actually reached out to me. They're like, would you like to sponsor? I'm like, do I look like I need this? Do you want to they are now at the right temperature for launch. Countdown continues. T minus four minutes, 15 seconds. So Jared, you actually got me into photography and about five years later, I'm actually, I actually own four cameras and I'm a member of the press and I'll be covering this launch. Nice man. So. But that's awesome. Thank yeah. you for letting me know. It's good stuff, man. Good luck today. Yeah, it should be good. All right, good luck. Thanks. Don't screw it up. Well, hopefully we get a launch. Have sure. fun. It's gonna be cool. All right, good luck. Thank you, man. Shoot raw. Always shoot raw. Are you shooting raw? Oh, 100%. All right, good. <laughs> so after talking to these guys, or listening to these guys talk about what they're shooting, I have no idea what I'm gonna do yet. I know there's the 70 to 200 I'm gonna be banging off some stuff with. Uh, it sounds like you're not going to really want to track it much past the clouds, right? It depends on clouds, you can't even see it. Yeah, it depends on the clouds. I don't see any yeah. clouds up there. So, so like with quick. like three C's probably. Yeah. So, are you got? Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. I'll, I'll figure it out. You guys will see my results or you won't because they either will work or they won't work. And here we go. Ten. Hydrogen burn off igniters initiate. Seven. Six. Five. Four stage engine start. Three. Two, one, boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. All four RS25 engines on the core stage and two solid rocket boosters now propelling the vehicle at 128 miles per hour. Finally, after going down to NASA twice and having two scrubs, the third time was the charm, even though it was a night launch. Let me jump in here and say that I got a lot of requests from people wanting to purchase a print of the Artemis One launch. Now, originally, I put up 50 prints for sale that were signed and numbered, and they all sold out. So what I'm going to do is offer an option where it's not signed and it's not numbered, but it's still a 17 by 22 inch print printed by me off the Canon Pro 1000 printer. It also comes with free shipping, so you don't have to pay anything else. The price that you see is the price that you're going to get. But remember, this isn't the limited edition signed or numbered. This isn't limited to a certain amount of prints. It's however many people purchase is however many I will ship out. So now let's jump back in to the video. Now I owe a great debt of gratitude to the photographers that I spoke with before the launch in the hours leading up to it, because honestly, if I didn't talk to them and get a basic starting point, I would have missed everything. Uh, there's no way in hell that my exposure would have been right and that I would have been able to change it quick enough on all three cameras to get it to where it needed to be. So a big thank you goes out to all of those photographers who talked to me, shared their knowledge, shared their wealth of information, and gave me a good starting point to at least give myself a fighting shot to get it right and not make it all for naught. So this right here is what I consider to be my best shot. I was at 1 3200th of a second at F8 at 100 ISO, which is pretty darn close to what they recommended I shoot at. But check it out, like this is without it edited and this is it edited. So honestly, the power of the raw file holds true but no one knew how bright this rocket would be. My goal was to try and make sure that I at least got the flame and it didn't flame out and just become blinky blinks, all white and no detail. But the tough part is, is nothing is lighting up the rocket. So you're using the light that is caused by the engine that's bouncing off the ground and reflecting back up into the rocket. But as soon as the rocket clears the tower by more than like 100 feet, 
there's no more light on it, and you're stuck with just the rocket. So it's very difficult to get an exposure that has the rocket perfect and then the flame perfect. So I went somewhere in between and I went with this. Sure, there's some burnt out sections right here that are blown out, but I still wanted to get that detail in the smoke, detail in the fire, and then get some of the Artemis rocket right here. Now, as a reminder, you can go over to jaredpolin.com slash store and pick up a unsigned, unnumbered version of this print because people were requesting that because the original one sold out. I sold out of all of the signed limited edition out of 50 prints, but I opened this one back up and it does include that free shipping. So anyway, back here, let me run you through some of the photos right here. This is where it started, right? Not the best. Those aren't edited because they weren't gonna be good. Then I started to edit. Now, here's how this worked. What I was doing is I set a timer in the camera. In this case, this was for the R3 with the 402.8, which was set up by itself. And it was set to a timer. For whatever reason, Canon doesn't give you the option to do anything faster than one frame a second that it automatically shoots. So that's what I set it for. I knew that I would get two, three, four, possibly usable shots in those seconds because you have maybe five, six seconds before it clears the tower once it launches. So I just set it to go and hoped for the best, framed it up the way that I thought it would be, and I did lock the focus in and I ended up getting what I think is the good shot for me. Is it the best in the world? No, but for my first time doing this and basically guessing the settings with the help of all those guys, I'm really happy with the results that I ended up getting. I will tell you, with the 600 F4, I missed it clearing the tower. I just couldn't find it. I just, I just, I couldn't find it. And this is what I ended up getting, right? It up into the sky and it ended up not being that big of a deal. I mean, I would have preferred getting it at the tower, but hey, I, I didn't get it perfect. Um, but you can see there's not a lot of light up here. And if you get it, if you go up with your exposure, it blows out and you get no detail in the fire. I can bring back some of the fire like this by going like that with the highlights, but it gets even more difficult to bring back the rocket itself. So I don't think these are that great of shots. And then I followed the rocket as it kept going into space further and further. And then I sent one up on a tripod with the 70 to 200 only at 111 millimeters. It would have been better at 200 millimeters. Learning experience, set that up on a tripod to go on itself with the one second intervals. I wish that it would have allowed me to, you know, press the button and it just shot. I could have set it to say 10 frames a second. That would have been cooler or 15 or 20 or even 30 for a burst of five, six, seven, eight seconds would have been ideal. Hopefully that's something that Canon will add in the future because I know that Nikon has it, but anyway, I love the reflection on the water, but we're so far away. And yes, you could end up cropping it to make it tighter, but then it's really gonna be very similar to the winning shot right here. Now I wanna show you a photographer named John Kraus who got this shot right here. This is the moon in the background, and this is the Artemis launching on the left. At first I'm like, well, why does the moon matter in this picture? And then my dumbass was like, oh, that's because this thing is going to the moon. And that's the whole point. Now what John did, which was great, is he got permission to be off base, off site. He was on like a landing strip somewhere where he had permission because he knew he wanted to get this angle. Because when it was delayed, he knew that the moon would be in a certain place. And this was the shot that he wanted. By the way, he shoots Nikon Z9. He's got an 800 6.3. He's got all of the different glass that he needs. So he's a Nikon shooter. And he got this shot. Now, it's very difficult to get this exposed where you get the rocket perfect and the moon. If you expose just for the, the, the moon, the rocket wouldn't be there. If you expose just for the rocket, the moon basically wouldn't be there. So this was the best that he could do, and it ended up being a cover shoot for one of the magazines. Now, he also got this shot of the separation of the rockets, which I didn't even think about. I'm like, I don't, I don't even know how the hell I'm gonna follow that. And my favorite shot that he got, honestly, is this one right here. Why do I think this is my favorite shot? Because at the angle he was at, when it started to arch, he got the four engines burning underneath, plus the two solid rocket boosters on the side. And I thought that that was the coolest photo of them all that I saw. A lot of the other photographers that we talked to got great shots as well. You're very limited with what you can do. It's over in about 15 seconds once it clears the tower. And then if you can track it into the sky, you can shoot a little bit longer. But this was a really cool experience. I, I This was my first rocket launch that I saw. And 
the feeling and the sound was awesome as it ripped across the water after it was going for like 20, 30 seconds. Then the, then the, then the sound hit us and I just kept shooting. And then it was over. And I packed my bags, got on the bus, went to the airport at four in the morning, got a 7.30 flight back to Philly, less than 24 hours on the ground, and I ended up getting the shot. So I'm, I'm happy that I was able to go twice and then decided to do the third thing again. I would have kept going because if I missed it, I wouldn't have been happy. So this thing comes around every uh, maybe four years because who knows when the next one's going to launch. Maybe I'll try again. Maybe we'll get a day launch next time. Maybe it will be different. But I'm happy with at least the one shot I got. And if you'd like to purchase it, again, jaredpolin.com slash store to pick it up. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Jared Polin, Photo.com. See ya.